Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I doing? So today we are going to take a look at another mini computer from a company that you guys liked the two other videos that I did for their products. So this one it actually comes with Intel Core i3 1220p which is 10 core 12 thread and the clock speed can go up to 4.4 and it comes with integrated Intel graphics which I personally never tested how good that is what type of games you can play on it. It is like a $300 computer so I personally believe the price is very fair. So without further ado, let's take a look at it. So this is the device, Chewy Lark Box S, and that's the type, and it comes with i3 1220p, and they ship the 16 gigabyte, 512 gigabyte SSD model. It seems like this 16 gigabyte DDR4 is 3200 megahertz, and it's a dual channel. So let me take this out. Ah, okay, VESA mount stuff and the warranty card and the sticker and the documentation, which is how to mount it and all that. So this one I don't need. So this is how it looks. In terms of I.O., you get two full-size HDMI. One is 2.0, one is 1.4. There is no indicator which is which. The Ethernet is a gigabit Ethernet, and these are USB 2 ports. So two USB 2 ports in the back, which you can use maybe for the keyboard and mouse. On the front side, there is the power button and there is two USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports and two USB C. One is a fully featured type C port and the other is 3.2 Gen 1 type C port. Headphone jack is also here and other stuff. That's it in terms of IO. I guess it's the power supply. I love these generic power supplies because I can use it for many other projects as well. It uses a kind of standard barrel jack. So in terms of power supply, input is basically accepts from 100 to like 240 so us europe it's all covered and the output is 19 volt 4.74 amp which is 90 watts this is the max this can drop which i don't even think it will come close to that but we're gonna test we're gonna check before that i want to know what is inside which i have to violate the sticker and then open it up and i think it's under this uh, rubber feet there's going to be screws so i guess it is what it is let's do it i know this is not really needed for that tiny sticker but yeah okay let's open this up yep there is the screw let's take a look at it okay the screws are small so the regular screwdriver doesn't work i have to use i fix it kit yep that one works Okay, so that is basically needed if you want to replace RAM or SSD. I thought I'm doing it wrong, but no. So eight screws, two for the top plastic cover and two to remove this aluminum, I guess used as a heatsink. Yeah, it goes over here. So it is Rayson. Okay, 512 uh, PCIe Gen 4. That's the NVMe SSD slot. What is underneath here? Nothing. So I guess I don't know why they put it in there. Ah, okay. So because it's metal, I don't want it to short anything in there. The metal part, I guess that's the reason. And there is a RAM. Let's take a look at the brand on the RAM. It is, again, same company, Rayson 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200. Okay, so that's kind of it. What I want to do is I want to boot and see what type of operating system they're shipping it with. I will keep the RAM. I will replace the NVMe SSD. So it's it's a dual channel, but they only used and populated one RAM, just so you know. So if you remove this, yeah. As you can see, you have two slots. So you can put 16 and 16. You can technically run this with 64 gigabyte RAM, just so you know. Now, I'm not gonna put it back together. As I said, I wanna see and then use my own NVMe SSD that does have stuff on it. All right, just give me a couple of minutes. Let me put this on. Let's take a look at it. And then I will just use my own NVMe SSD and start doing some benchmarks and Ubuntu and all that stuff. All right, give me a couple of minutes. All right, so I have everything wired up let's boot this up let's see the power consumption i want to see the bias okay 
Oh, you already booted into Windows. Okay. So I can tell that's Windows 11 and I just want to see where it is. Is there anything pre-installed or you just come to the Windows 11 config page, which I think that's the one. Yeah. So it's a fresh Windows 11 and it seems like it. All right. There you have it. So, okay. That's also RGB. I just noticed that's a fancy lights. Okay. I gotta see what is inside. This is very nice. Very neat. Actually, what are the dimensions of this thing? So this is 12 centimeter by 12. Height is four centimeters. And as you can see, it booted into Windows 11 and it is using nine to 14 watts ish. Okay, I just want to test the BIOS. Okay, so we are here. Lark Box S is right there. 12th generation Intel Core i3, 1220p, 1500 megahertz, 16 gigabyte RAM, and the NVMe SSD is detected. Okay, date and time is also kind of correct. Okay, CPU configuration. These are performance core and efficient cores. These are the settings. Seems like you guys like it when I walk through the BIOS settings. Hyper threading, all that stuff is enabled by default. Network settings, restore power on the AC power loss and ARTC wake. These are chipset settings, PCI Express settings. Okay, so you have a lot of settings in here. BIOS, TCSS, DMI, graphics settings. Okay, so it's pretty standard. I've seen this in their other computer as well. In PC HIO, you can also play around the PCI Express port and other settings. This is the link control, compliance test, root 4, SATA, USB, security. Oh, by the way, yeah, TPM2 is there because we were able to also boot into Windows 11. Security is there. Boot options, VGA support. Okay. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the BIOS and I showed you that it comes with Windows 11 and the power consumption BIOS is 12, 13. All right, that's pretty much it. Now let me switch up the SSD with my NVMe SSD that does have a lot of tools installed on it. I will be right back. All right. So we are back in Windows. Honestly, I'm impressed. Let me explain. So here is the SSD scores. This is very acceptable and very fast speeds. And here is the 3D Mark score for the CPU, 4200. Okay. And here is the Cinebench score, 430. And I can show you that I can even play Tomb Raider. So it was 50 frames, just so you know. I don't know why the frame counter, because probably I minimized it, but just accept it from me. It was 50 frames per second and the normal resolution, okay? So, you know, when you start the game, it asks for the resolution to be normal or high quality or ultra, whatever. I put it on the normal settings and I was getting 50 FPS, okay? So games like Tomb Raider, yeah. You can play it. I know it's old game. I know it's not demanding. I understand. But I'm just saying that some games you can absolutely play. And obviously, Euro Truck also works. But I tried like Robocop and Batman. Those not going to work. Okay. So you can absolutely play some games on it. Multimedia stuff, definitely. If you want to run, I don't know, multiple Docker images on this, multiple VMs, have virtualization, use it with like Plex and Jellyfin and a portable, you know, multimedia station. Absolutely. As you can see, See, when you're in Windows doing nothing, that's like 10 watts, okay? And uh, I will show you in Ubuntu better when I do like stress ng and other things. I believe you can run multiple virtual machines on this. You can play some games on this. So by the way, I found a list on Google and on Reddit. Someone basically played some games with i3 11 15 G4 and 8 gigabyte RAM. So this is better and higher than that. And they were playing, you know, GTA 4 50 FPS, GTA 5 70. 20p they were playing watchdogs and this and that i know i understand these are not demanding games wolfenstein that's probably had a 10 years game to older so these are old games i get it but you can play some games on this bad boy and you can turn it into multimedia station portable that being said you are kind of limited to one nvme ssd you can plug in through usb 3.2 some additional hard disk drives but that's uh, up to you so that being said you know everything is working in windows i showed you some benchmarks we played some game now it's time for you power users that make sure that it actually can run ubuntu and linux as well and as you can see idling is 10 watts okay so let's go to ubuntu and check that out very quickly i will be right back all right so we are back and i am in ubuntu now let's do a quick neo fetch and you will see the temperatures of all the cores right over there on the right side okay and if i do a suspension real quick and you can see that it detected the intel cpu over here 
the fact this is Ubuntu 24 and all other stuff that's in there. As you can see, it goes up to 57 watts when we are using. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got 33,000 in Sysbench, but Stress NG is more accurate. So just generally saying, I always reference it. In this test, you will get 10,500 in Raspberry Pi 5. So that being said, let me just type out the Stress NG command. Yeah, so by default, it is using scaling governors. It's in the power save mode. So it says if you want the real performance, you have to write performance to this file. So we can absolutely do that as well. But I just want to show you that's right now it's 42 using all the cores. So I'm going to change the scaling. Okay, without changing the scaling, we are getting 371,000. Keep that in mind. So that's a very, very good number, 371,000. And in Raspberry Pi 5, you will get 870, 900 in this test, the very same test. And as this one suggests, the scaling governor, I am going to put it into performance mode. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go right over here. What we can do is we can set performance echo performance to well i don't know which cores actually really need but i'm gonna do for all okay i restarted the test and as you can see now we are going to 74 75 watts as you can see my command over there it's ugly i know i'm sure there is a more efficient and better way i just wanted to do it fast so i echoed performance into scale and governor to all every single course and it went up to 75 watts and now it's kind of back down but it was at the 75 watts i think it's wrapping up yep so the score now we are getting well it didn't change much that same right what was it before 371 okay all right not that bad okay we got like 7,000 more scores but anyway that is a very impressive number and as you can see it's not thermal throttling or anything and uh, another thing I want to make sure is that Ethernet which I actually I'm kind of sure because when I was downloading a bunch of games from Steam it was real fast it was game downloads were capping my Ethernet so yeah definitely okay so there you have it that's a gigabit Ethernet and when you are doing iPerf it goes to 14 watts and when it's over and you're idle in ubuntu it drops down to 8 watts super impressive very nice and it is very quiet very chilly everything is in order and does have that fancy led rgb ring light thingy and one more thing i want to do on this one obviously this is not for that but i just want to show you guys what you can do is you can say olama run llama 3.1 right i have this model downloaded in this ubuntu okay it loaded it was fast okay actually you know what i'm gonna do verbose fine all right let's keep going the big and more most important question what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow right we're not going to specify african or european let's see what it says okay so you have it here you see the speed it's not super fast i understand but it is very acceptable it runs ai models very well i just downloaded olama and installed it that's it didn't do any changes any modifications nothing special no hacks nothing when the model is running and you see the cpu usage and all that stuff and this is around you know 36 37 watts okay this is a great machine i'm gonna be honest it is extremely quiet there is some fan i know but it makes some noise you know you can't really hear it here's the speed results there you go so total duration was 51 and load duration 17 and 22 tokens and the rate is 8.5 so 8.5 tokens per second okay it is fast it's nice for that size computer it's very acceptable we played games on it i ran windows 11 i ran ubuntu i did cpu disk ssd benchmarks all that stuff zero issues zero troubles so big thumbs up from me for 300 bucks that's a good deal okay now it's even dropping less than eight watts when you're doing nothing so overall it's an impressive piece of equipment i didn't find any issues didn't run into any issues not in windows not in linux oh by the way let me try the flash rom uh, very quickly flash rom dash p internal bias that then okay i like it even more now because i can dump the bias now so if you want to mod bias if there is intel me if you want to remove that i didn't see intel me so if you want to remove something you want to enable some option you want to add something remove something play around it reverse engineer the bias i did like two videos on how to reverse engineer and find abnormal things in bias uefi dumps so you can go for it right here so you don't need that soic clip and doing those things like manually 
easily you can just uh, do it right on the operating system in ubuntu so i hope i covered everything i covered from dumping ram to running the llm model and all that stuff and gaming and ubuntu and windows by the way i maybe not mentioned it but there is wi-fi i did a wi-fi speed test it is acceptable in wi-fi six ranges five six ranges i was getting like 400 megabits per second so wi-fi card is also there and it is working but because i was using ethernet i never hit my mind to just to try this but i just wanted to let you know it is there and it is working and if you want the exact model it is intel 9580 wgw i guess that's pretty much it there you have the wireless chip as well and there's an antenna that comes to here to the side okay that's it now i'm gonna put it together hope you guys enjoyed this video i don't have anything negative to say about it everything worked fine so i'm gonna give it a thumbs up thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video bye for now